Hey folks, what are planar graphs? That's what we'll finally be talking about in today's Wrath of Math lesson. This is certainly a deep well of study. We'll just be dipping our toes into the pool today. We'll be introducing planar graphs, some related terms, and we'll see an example of a non-planar graph near the end of the lesson. So let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. Consider the complete graph on four vertices, K4. If you were to draw this complete graph in the plane, you might draw it something like this. This is a drawing of K4. Notice that this drawing of the graph has what's called an edge crossing, where these two edges cross. If you were using this graph to model, say, an underground subway system, this might be a design that you're not too fond of. Seeing these two edges, or what might represent tunnels crossing, would mean that your subway trains are gonna crash into each other unless you build one tunnel way higher than the other one, which could be a huge expense, a huge thing that you're not willing to do. So you might be interested in, is there a way we could have the same sort of structure, an isomorphic graph, but a design or a drawing that doesn't have any of these edge crossings? Can we do that in the plane? And if you were to try to do that, you might come up with something like this. We could start with our four cycle, just like we did before, and then draw this diagonal to join these two vertices. And then before, what caused the problem, the edge crossing, was drawing an edge from this vertex to this one right inside here. But if we want to avoid that edge crossing, we can take this edge out and around, and bam, there is a drawing of the complete graph, K4, in the plane with no edge crossings. And this is the crux of planar graphs. We say that a graph is planar if it can be drawn in the plane such that no edges cross. Note that this is a definition about possibility. These are isomorphic graphs. They are both planar graphs. This one is a planar graph because here, even though it's drawn with edge crossings, it's a planar graph because it can be drawn without edge crossings. Let's reflect for a moment on this definition. It would seem fairly straightforward then to verify that a graph is planar. To show it's planar, all we have to do is find a, a single drawing of the graph in the plane where there are no edge crossings. Bam, that's enough to show it's a planar graph. To show that a graph is non-planar, however, we would need to verify that none of the infinitely many complicated possible drawings of the graph in the plane have no edge crossings. We'd have to show that they all do have edge crossings to show that it's impossible to draw the graph without edge crossings in the plane. So that would seem considerably more difficult to show that a graph is non-planar. And it certainly is tricky, and that'll be one of the fun things as we continue to study planar graphs, seeing some of the results and some of the tricks we can use to show that indeed a graph is non-planar. Now there is an important distinction between these graphs, even though they are isomorphic and they are both planar graphs. This one is called a plane graph, whereas the one on the left is not. If a graph is drawn in the plane with no edge crossings, that, with focus on the drawing, that is called a plane graph. Whereas this is not, because it does have an edge crossing. This is probably the first time where we have started to distinguish graphs based purely on how they're drawn. Again, this is a plane graph because it's a drawing of the graph with no edge crossings in the plane, whereas this is not a plane graph. This distinction, this term is important because there are properties we'll state that are only true with regards to plane graphs and things that we'll be interested in regarding plane graphs that don't really make much sense to study with graphs that cannot be drawn this way or graphs that simply are not drawn this way even if they could be like this one here. So again, let's just draw that distinction. A planar graph is a graph that can be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. A plane graph is a planar graph that has been drawn in the plane with no edge crossings.
One of the things we'll talk about a lot with plane graphs are the regions or faces that they divide the plane into. Notice this plane graph has four regions. A region here we could call R1, this region we could call R2, this one R3, and then the unbounded exterior region R4 that consists of the rest of the plane. So again, these areas or spaces that a plane graph divides the plane into, these are called the regions or faces of the graph. Another thing we'll be interested in related to regions or faces of plane graphs are the boundaries of the regions. Typically, the first definition we'll talk about is that the boundary of a region is the subgraph, the set of vertices and edges, that are incident with the region. So for example, the region R1, the vertices and edges incident to the region R1, well, that's this triangle here, this sort of complete graph on three vertices. I think an easy way to think about it, to identify the boundary of a region, is take the region you're concerned with, for example, R4, and if you were to color in that whole region, what would be the lines that, that are sort of your boundary, right? I mean. The word really describes it. If we were trying to color in the infinite region R4, we would be stopped by this line here, this edge, and this edge, and this edge. They make up the boundary of the region R4. Same thing if we were trying to color in the region R3, our boundary would be these three edges and their vertices here. So this is also a triangle as it so happens, even though it doesn't look like one. So here, just to make it crystal clear what I was talking about with one more example, what is the boundary of R2? Let's actually do the coloring. If we tried to color in the region R2, the boundary where we're stopping the coloring is this triangle here, these vertices and edges. So the spaces or, yeah, the spaces or regions that a plane drawing of a graph separates the plane into, those are called the regions or faces of the graph. The vertices and edges that are incident with that region, they make up the boundary of the region. One thing you might notice with this plane graph are that all of the edges are part of two boundaries. For example, consider this edge here. It's part of the boundary of the region R2, and it's a boundary, or it's part of the boundary of the region R1. This edge here is also part of the boundary of R1, but it's also in the boundary of the region R4. However, this is not always the case. Consider another plane graph. We could start off with K3, but then we're gonna add one edge right in here. This is another plane graph. It's drawn in the plane with no edge crossings and it separates the plane into two regions, R1, and then this what's called the external region, R2. Notice this edge here is only part of the boundary of the region R1. The boundary of R2 is just the, the triangle here. So this edge is only in one boundary, the boundary of R1. So you might start to wonder what's different between all the edges here and this one edge here. The edges in this graph were all part of two boundaries. This edge right here is part of only one boundary. So just something to think about. Another thing you might notice looking at this graph, there's another way that we could draw it in the plane. We could draw it like this. Again, start off with our triangle. And then with this one more edge in vertex, we could put it outside of the triangle. Now, just as this previous drawing did, this drawing splits the plane into two regions, R1 and R2. However, in this drawing, the boundary of R1 consisted of all four of these edges and the vertices of the graph. Here, the boundary of R1 is just the triangle, and it's the boundary of R2 that contains all the edges and vertices of the graph, because those are the parts of the graph that are incident with the region R2. So that's a little interesting. We can draw the same planar graph in the plane in some slightly different ways where the regions have different boundaries. Let's draw one more planar graph before we touch on an important property. Consider the path graph on three vertices. This is just another example of a graph drawn in the plane. 
with no edge crossings. Now, here's something pretty cool. How many vertices does this graph K4 have? Well, certainly it's got four vertices. How many edges does it have? It's got six edges. If you were to count them up, there are six. And how many regions or faces does it have in this plane drawing? Well, it's got R1, R2, R3, and R4. So that's four regions. If we take the number of vertices and subtract the number of edges and add the number of regions or faces, what do we get? Well, in this case, we have four minus six plus four, which is equal to two. Interesting. What if we look at one of these other plane graphs? Consider this one here. How many vertices does it have? One, two, three, four vertices. How many edges? One, two, three, four edges. And how many regions does it separate the plane into? Just two, R1 and R2. So again, that's vertices minus edges plus faces. In this case, that's four minus four plus two, which is also equal to two. Funny. What about this other plane graph? It's got three vertices, two edges, and this splits the plane into just a single external region, which happens to be the case for all tree graphs. There's just a single region in a plane drawing of a tree graph. So this is three minus two vertices minus edges plus the number of regions or faces. That's one in this case. Three minus two plus one is equal to two. Amazing. This is an incredible result. It's called Euler's identity and the result is the vertices minus edges plus faces for any connected plane graph. So for any plane drawing of a connected planar graph, it's always gonna be two. Pretty sweet, and that'll be one of the exciting proofs we do soon. So again, that's called Euler's identity or Euler's formula, which is a pretty useless name because tons of things are named after Euler. But again, it is in a connected plane graph, the number of vertices minus edges plus the number of faces always going to be equal to two. Pretty sweet. And be sure to subscribe so you don't miss the video where we prove that. All right. Now to finally wrap things up, let me just throw the definition at you one more time while I erase. A planar graph is a graph that can be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. So a non-planar graph, we talked briefly about it a little bit ago, a non-planar graph is a graph that cannot be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. No matter how you draw it in the plane, there's always some edges that have to cross. So let's see an example of a non-planar graph. Probably the most famous example is K33, the complete bipartite graph with partite sets of cardinality three and three. So we've got this bipartite graph with partite sets that have three vertices in each, all the vertices in one partite set are adjacent to all the vertices in the other partite set. Now, just a glance, this graph might tell you, holy moly, there's no way we'd be able to draw this in the plane with no edge crossings. I mean, look at this mess. And we can't, but we can get surprisingly close. So let's just give it a try. If we were trying to find a plane graph drawing of K33, let me write that. This is the graph K33, complete bipartite graph. If we were to, trying to find a plane drawing of this graph where none of the edges cross, we might start off with this Hamiltonian cycle. I've used colors to separate the partite sets. So the blue vertices are in one partite set, the red vertices are in the other partite set. Notice right now, there's just three more edges we've got to add to the graph. This blue vertex needs to be adjacent to this red vertex. This blue vertex need to be adjacent to that red vertex and so on. All the blues have to be adjacent to all the reds. Right now we're missing three edges. So if we tried to finish this plane drawing of the graph, first we might join this red vertex to this blue vertex. All right, only two edges left to go, an edge here and an edge there, although not necessarily drawn in that way. Clearly, if we want to join this blue vertex to this red vertex, well, if we take it through the middle, we'll be crossing two regions, and thus we'll have an edge crossing where we intersect the boundary of those regions. However, we don't need to have that edge crossing. We could go out and around. Bam. Now there's only one edge left that we need to complete the graph. We gotta join this red vertex to this blue vertex. Again, we have the same sort of problem if we wanna to try to stay inside the cycle. We'd have to pass through two regions, thus we would pass through a boundary where there would be an edge crossing. 
Unfortunately, if we try to take this outside the cycle, now we're gonna have the same problem. We'd have to go from this external region and then we'd have to go through to this other region that we just created with the previous edge. We'd have to have that edge crossing. There's no way around it. Bummer. So this is an example of a non-planar graph. And what we just went through is certainly not a proof. That's just a look at the difficulty that arises. I think you'd agree that this type of drawing would be a pretty good shot. If there was any way to draw this graph in the plane, that would seem like an elegant way to do it, but we see that it's not gonna happen. So K33, complete bipartite graph with partite sets of cardinalities three and three is non-planar. However, as some of you may know, if you grab a coffee cup kind of like this with a handle, one that you can draw on with marker, if you tried that, you would be able to draw this graph on that coffee cup without any edge crossings, which is interesting. Of course, we all know that the coffee cup is not the same thing as a two-dimensional plane, but this gives you a very spooky mathematical difference. You can draw K33 on a coffee cup with a handle without any edge crossings, and we can't do that in the plane. Again, that's what makes the graph non-planar. So that's just a little bit about planar graphs. Don't fret too much if some of these concepts you feel a little fuzzy on. The most important one that I want you to get from this lesson is what is a planar graph? What is a non-planar graph? And we'll talk more about everything else in future lessons. Planar graph, again, is a graph that can be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. A planar graph drawn in that way is called a plane graph. A non-planar graph is a graph that cannot be drawn in the plane with no edge crossings. No matter how we draw a non-planar graph in the plane, it will always have edge crossings. So I hope this video helped you understand all of that. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. If you'd like to help support the channel, I'd really appreciate a small donation on PayPal or small monthly pledge on Patreon. Links to those in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet.